Hi YouTube, Watchify here with another unboxing video. This one's for my first Seiko Monster and it's model SBDY105, also known as SRPG57. I ordered this one from Sakura Watches and it arrived in under a week, so let's get to it. I had known about this watch and I remember seeing the announcement when it came out in early 2021. It was released alongside a Prospex Tuna that also shared the same dial. I think I was interested in it at the time, but wasn't sure if I liked the bezel design and the style of the markings on the bezel. Uh, since seeing more photos of it online though, I, I've changed my mind and I think it's distinctive enough to be a, a nice add to the collection. It's a 200 meter diver and a more refined version of the original and famous Seiko Monster. This model is a special edition, which means there isn't a limited amount, but Seiko might decide to discontinue it at any time. I paid 345 US dollars for it, which I think is pretty good since it retails for 525. Uh, what also drew me to the watch is the dial, which is another Save the Ocean series, but with an Antarctica theme with uh, penguin tracks on the left side of the textured dial and a light blue to dark blue gradient. Since this is a Japan model, it has kanji as the alternate language on the calendar wheel. This watch has a flat mineral crystal with a candy bar cyclops, as you can see. Uh, these hands kind of remind me of the hands on the Seiko Samurai. Mm, the watch has a wide chapter ring with cutouts around the indices, which is something I don't think I've seen before. Taking a good look at the watch to see if there's any quality control issues and honestly so far I'm not seeing any. This watch has the Seiko automatic 4R36 movement inside and the case size is 42.4 millimeters according to Seiko. You can see the distinctive case design with the shark tooth cutouts that extend from the bezel to the case. And I'm thinking that's Seiko paying homage to the previous generation of monsters. There are other variations of this watch, but I like this one most due to the dial and how it has a stainless steel bezel. So far, I'm really impressed with how this watch looks in person. I, I think it looks even better in person than online. The crown's at 4 o'clock and unsigned. Underneath is the screw down case back with the Seiko Wave logo. It does say special edition. There's solid end links, which is nice. The clasp is stamp fold over metal, but I've mentioned in some previous videos that that doesn't really bother me anymore. Uh, let's see, four micro adjustment holes. And this bracelet has a um, diver's extension too. I like that this model comes on a metal bracelet and also like the style. The center links or the faux center links are polished. The rest of the links are brushed except for the sides. The case has drill locals. And I like the finish work that you get here. It's got a nice uh, vertical brushing that extends from the case uh, actually to the side of the bezel. The lugs are pretty sharply angled. Uh, there's some polishing in between the lugs. I think the end links match the case very well. It looks pretty good to me. The bezels, I would say it's easy to grip and turn. It's um, pretty smooth rotation. And I want to check to see how it's aligning. It seems to align pretty well, which is good because there is no bezel insert here, so there would be no way for me to fix it. Um, but I'm pretty satisfied with the quality control. The markings on the bezel insert are lightly engraved. Um, 
and there's an embedded loom pip at 12 o'clock. Uh, nice brush work on the hands. So of course the all the indices are loomed as well as the hands so I'm gonna want to check that out charge it up. Now I'll give you a closer look at some of the tags that came with the watch. There's actually, I don't think I've seen this one before, um, save the ocean tag. The watch weighs about 188 grams, so that, that's with all the links. It's, that's pretty substantial. And uh, here's the loom charged up. It's green. It would have been nice if Seiko had done this loom in blue to sort of uh, go along with the dial. I'll go ahead and put it on wrist uh, just to show you what it roughly would look like. I have a six and three quarter inch wrist. And uh, I think it looks appropriate. I don't think it looks too big on my wrist. The thickness on this watch is over 13 millimeters though. Um, but yeah, this looks really good on wrist. I can't wait to wear it. Um, I think these uh, bracelets are, the links are held together with pins and collars, which I've, I've seen before, so no big deal. A big part of quality control is how well the movement runs. So this one is losing about six seconds, five or six seconds in dial up position. The beat error is 0.7, which would have been nicer to be closer to zero, but it's definitely within Seiko's uh, tolerances for this movement. I'd like to check it in a different angle. As long as there isn't a drastic uh, difference between um, positions or orientation, then, um, then I'm fine with the, the movement. Later on, if I'm unhappy with the accuracy, I can always regulate it myself. I think that's pretty much it. I'm really happy with the watch. I'm glad I got the Japanese version so I could get the kanji, which I always like. I'm very happy with the quality control. The oh, I forgot to mention that the lug width is 20 millimeters. Um, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to wearing this watch and I'll size the bracelet, wear it, and then later on I'll do a full review video on it. So hopefully this was helpful to you and if you're considering this watch. And that's about it. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe if you like the video. See you next time.